All right, biology students, welcome back. We're still in unit two. We're talking about the cell. Uh, and in the last lesson, we learned something called the cell theory, which states that all living things are made of cells. Cells are the basic unit of life. And then all cells come from pre-existing cells. So where did these ideas come from? We learned in that lesson that they came from discoveries made by several influential scientists that utilized the microscope to make these important observations. Uh, we also mentioned in the last lesson that cells can be classified as prokaryotes or eukaryotes, and then we discussed some similarities and differences between um, these classifications. Remember, all cells contain organelles, so we talked about some of the similarities between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and some similar structures between the two. Uh, and I promised you in that lesson that we would spend an entire lesson going through the different organelles found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, and we would be focusing on the function of those organelles. So that's what we're going to do today. What I need you to do on your end is just make sure that you have some sort of note-taking guide or you are getting down all of these organelles and that you are listing uh, not only the function of the organelle, but you are classifying uh, whether they're found in prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells, both, or if they're uh, found in eukaryotic cells, are they found uh, in plant cells, animal cells, or both. Now remember, eukaryotic cells do include fungi and protists, but we are focusing just on plant and animal cells today. All right, so let's start with the cell membrane. Um, sometimes this is called the plasma membrane, so you might see it both ways on worksheets and assignments, um, but they, they are referring to the same part. Uh, the plasma membrane or the cell membrane surrounds all cells. So you can find the cell membrane in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And for eukaryotic cells, both plant and animal cells. Now, the function of the cell membrane is to help the cell maintain homeostasis. And it's going to do this by controlling what enters and leaves the cell. Um, now, it's made of two layers. We call this the phospholipid bilayer. We're going to get into this information more in detail in a future lesson, um, but I just wanted to mention that here. All right, then we have the cytoplasm, uh, which is a gel-like substance made mainly of water um, that's found inside of all cells, so both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, and then um, plant and animal cells for eukaryotic. Um, I do want to also mention, because we're going to learn this a lot in biology, the cytoplasm also um, provides an environment for chemical reactions that happen within the cell. And we'll learn more about those um, as we progress through the course. All right, ribosomes. Uh, ribosomes are found in all cells, so both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, plant cells and animal cells. Um, they're made, ribosomes are made of proteins and rRNA. Um, they're located in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which we'll look at in just a second. We, you can also find ribosomes floating in the cytoplasm. Uh, and their main job is to make proteins. All right, the cytoskeleton. Um, the cytoskeleton is made of thread-like fibers. Um, and proteins that are found all throughout the cell. Now, they can be found in eukaryotic cells um, and both plant and animal cells. And the function of the cytoskeleton is it provides structure for cells and movement uh, of different organelles. So it gives the cell its shape as well, but this is specifically for animal cells. Um, that don't have a cell wall, so they need something to help give the cell support and shape, and so the cytoskeleton does that. Now, all of the organelles that we're going to talk about um, from here on out are surrounded by a membrane. Um, so they're membrane-bound organelles. They're going to only be found in eukaryotic cells. All right, so let's start with the nucleus here. Um, the nucleus is surrounded by what we call a nuclear membrane. You can see that 
purple um, membrane up here in the illustration. Um, it contains genetic information. So the function of the nucleus is to store that genetic information in the form of DNA. Um, and it provides instructions for the rest of the cell. And you're going to find uh, the nucleus in both plant and animal cells. All right, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is going to hug the nucleus. We say rough endoplasmic reticulum because um, the term rough is used to describe the ribosomes that can be found on the rough ER. Now, the rough ER is going to make and package proteins for delivery. And while you don't find the rough ER in prokaryotic cells, you do find the rough ER in both plant and animal cells. Now, we also have something called the smooth ER. So it's called smooth ER because it's not going to contain ribosomes on the outside like the rough ER does. Um, but just like the rough ER, the smooth ER is found in all eukaryotic cells, so both plants and animal cells. The smooth ER does butt up or attach to the rough ER, and its job is to make uh, lipids or membranes. And specifically in liver cells, it is used to detoxify, and then in muscle cells, it's used to store calcium. All right, Golgi bodies, also referred to as the Golgi apparatus. It's like a folded membrane, um, and it's found in both eukaryotic cells, both types of eukaryotic cells. Um, I said that wrong. It's found in eukaryotic cells, specifically plant and animal cells. Um, and the function of the Golgi bodies or the Golgi apparatus is to help modify and sort and ship proteins. It's very similar to like a post office. Um, it can package up proteins and send these proteins to other places, both inside and outside of the cell via um, what we call vesicles. So I'm not sure that we've mentioned vesicles yet, but vesicles are like transportation systems uh, for proteins. All right, the mitochondria. Uh, the mitochondria is found in both plant and animal cells. Um, and the, the goal or the function of the mitochondria is it is where cellular respiration happens. Um, so it's how food gets converted into ATP or energy. And it has two parts. We're actually going to talk about the anatomy of the mitochondria in our energetics unit, which is unit three. But I just want to mention um, there's two parts to the mitochondria. You do have what's called the inner membrane and then the matrix. Again, we'll discuss that more um, in, a, in a future unit, the very next unit. All right, the vacuole. Um, so vacuoles are small and numerous in animal cells, but there's only one large central vacuole in plant cells. And I'm going to talk specifically about plant cell vacuole, the large central vacuole, uh, a little bit later. But both plant and animal cells have vacuoles, uh, but in, in the animal cell, there's a lot more of them. Um, the function of the vacuole looks a little different depending on whether you're talking about plant cells or animal cells. Um, but in they both store food, store water, um, and waste within the cell. Right, lysosomes. Uh, lysosomes are found in animal cells. Uh, they contain enzymes or proteins that speed up chemical reactions. Uh, they can also break down dead stuff uh, like food or bacteria, even old worn out parts of the cell. Uh, lysosomes also do something really cool called programmed cell death. It's called apoptosis, and we'll talk about that uh, a couple of lessons in the future. Um, but it's basically where the cell kills itself. Um, now, lysosomes, we're going to say, are found in animal cells only, uh, but I do want to make this side note that there is a bit of debate on this. Uh, so some scientists believe that they're present in plant cells as well, but the general consensus in the scientific community is that they're only found in animal cells. All 
All right, the centrosome, um, which is plural, it is made of microtubules. And um, if we're talking about this singular version, so if we're talking about one centriole, uh, we say centriole, but two centrioles together make what we call the centrosome. Uh, now the centrioles um, appear during cell division and they're gonna help pull the chromosomes apart. We're gonna discuss that in a future lesson. Uh, they are found only in animal cells. Now plants do have a similar structure that helps pull their chromosomes apart during cell division, but we don't call them centrioles. All right, the cell wall. So the cell wall is just a rigid structure uh, outside the cell membrane. It is found in plant cells um, and then also in eukary uh, excuse me, prokaryotic cells like in fun uh, fungi or algae. It's made of different materials depending on where it's found. So in plants, um, the cell wall is made of cellulose. It's made of uh, chitin and fungi and peptidoglycan in bacteria. Um, either way, the function of the cell wall helps the cell maintain its shape and structure and then also helps protect the cell. Um, again, it's not found in animal cells, only plant cells, and then in prokaryotic cells. All right, the chloroplast. Um, just like with the mitochondria, the chloroplast, we're going to get into the structure of the chloroplast when we get into unit three, our energetics unit. Um, but you do need to know for now that the chloroplast is found in plant cells. Uh, this is the site of photosynthesis, which is where uh, the plant uses energy from the sun to create sugar. All right, the large central vacuole, which we discussed earlier when we talked about vacuoles, is found only in the plant cell. Uh, its main function is to store water for the plant, also helps the plant maintain its shape. And what I want you to do now, just to sum all of this information up, I want you to go to YouTube and search for Introduction to Sales and watch this Amoeba Sisters video. They do a great job of walking through everything that we just discussed um, with some good illustrations. So be sure to check that out and I will see you in the next lesson.